people began noticing them about a decade ago. Jet engine exhaust, known as contrails, looked strange and lingered like never before. Something unusual is going on in our skies. This is something very, very different. These are chemical trails. Some observers believe experimental additives are turning these long lines of exhaust into chemical contrails. They call them chemtrails. They say it's all part of secret atmospheric tests, and humans are the unknowing guinea pigs. There's no evidence for supporting that assertion. Are some contrails more than normal fuel emissions and frozen water vapor? We call on witnesses from both sides. And experts conduct several experiments, searching for ominous substances and a final verdict as we examine the best evidence. Contrails have existed for as long as aircraft have flown. They normally occur when hot engine exhaust meets humid and frigid air at high altitudes. So a jet plane flies through this cold atmosphere. It produces a hot exhaust that is mostly composed of carbon dioxide and water vapor. This exhaust condenses into visible ice crystals. They form white streaks which can linger for minutes or hours. Aviation experts claim with increased air travel we're seeing more contrails. There's nothing more to it. But some people believe that the same aircraft can release experimental chemical additives in the air as chemical contrails or chemtrails. In this way, government agencies can either manipulate the weather or counteract global warming. But some people claim chemtrails are harming an unsuspecting public. Eyewitnesses and researchers who believe in chemtrails say that jet contrails don't vanish within minutes as they once did. They now linger and spread, sometimes for hours, forming strange, suspicious patterns. Rosalind Peterson is one of those believers. It's not normal for us. It's a grand experiment. Peterson lives in Northern California near San Francisco. At one time, she worked for the State Department of Agriculture. Part of her job involved being aware of environmental issues. I first started noticing unusual contrails in 2002 when it was brought to my attention by a friend of mine. He took me outside of his office and we began to look at these persistent jet contrails. Peterson thought she saw a connection between aircraft activity and reports of chemically contaminated water in communities throughout California. There were unusual high spikes in chemicals and heavy metals. Barium, aluminum, manganese, magnesium, zinc. And I suspect that we're getting the pollution from something in the atmosphere that's being released. Peterson became so alarmed about the chemical contrails that she formed an organization called California Skywatch, a group dedicated to clean air. I started documenting what I was seeing. I took pictures on my breaks. I took pictures at lunch hour. I started to really get angry because our once deep blue skies were no longer deep blue. They would turn into a white haze and they would turn into these man-made clouds uh, blocking the sunlight. Peterson discovered that she wasn't alone in her concerns. Hundreds of websites revealed that persistent airplane contrails had become a worldwide problem. I started then to research internet sites and government agencies, the EPA, NOAA, NASA, the United States Air Force. I learned that there was a lot of atmospheric heating and testing programs going on. I learned that there was lots of equipment that would leave these type of persistent plumes and, and spray chemicals. Will Thomas is an investigative journalist who believes that some contrails are part of secret atmospheric experiments. He's been writing about them for over 10 years. This is a deliberate project to slow down global warming. These trails were appearing over rural areas, away from navigational beacons and normal air routes. They would appear for weeks at a time and then disappear entirely, only to reappear months later, unlike normal scheduled air traffic. 
Thomas believes chemical contrails are an indication that someone is using jet emissions to engineer the weather and slow climate change. The problem with chemtrails is that when we attempt to geoengineer and interfere with complex interrelated atmospheric processes, we are in for unintended consequences on a major scale. Geoengineering is the artificial manipulation of Earth's environment on a large scale. In the early 1990s, American nuclear physicist Edward Teller was among the first scientists to model an experiment that would address the issue of global warming. He speculated that aluminum oxide could be injected into the upper atmosphere. It would act like tiny mirrors and deflect a portion of the sun's rays back into space. Supposedly, it was never put into practice. But activists believe the government has revived Teller's theory with some dire health consequences. Some of the literal fallout from this chemtrail project are these 10 micron particulates falling by the megaton on unsuspecting people, plants, and wildlife. Now a human hair is 100 microns across. 10 microns is submicroscopic. It can impact our lungs, it can inflame our hearts, give us heart disease, leading to fatalities. So this material comes down randomly in cl invisible clumps. Dave Dickey also believes in chemtrails. As a landscape contractor for a large city, he spends a lot of time out of doors. The contrail development is different than it ever has been in the past. And I do remember one in January of about 2002, where the number of flights overhead were extremely unusual. The number of contrails in the sky was unbelievable. Um, we're counting 40 to 60 flights. and. Uh, out of those 40 to 60 flights, uh, most of them left an incredibly persistent large plume which, uh, which would spread out and, and cover the sky. As a landscaper, Dickey has to be familiar with the types of trace chemicals usually found in the environment. He regularly takes water and soil samples and has them tested. There was some research done that claimed that aluminum oxide could be used um, to uh, reduce global warming. And I thought that if there was any chance that aluminum oxide would be used in the atmosphere, that it would show up in precipitation. He collected rain samples on days when he noticed heavier-than-usual air traffic and took them to a lab. And I expected to see baseline measurements where aluminum would show up in precipitation at about uh, 0.0093 milligrams per liter very small amount of aluminum naturally present in precipitation. It was uh, 20 times higher approximately than what was expected to, to find. Dave Dickey believes that what he captured was the fallout from chemically laden contrails. I was really hoping that we'd find natural water samples. And when I did find aluminum and barium, it's just another one of the indicating factors that something was unusual. Theoretically, scientists can cool the earth using chemical compounds placed in the upper atmosphere. But could other substances be put there for more ominous purposes? Military victory or defeat can depend on the weather. A commander who can control the weather has a weapon as powerful as any Air Force. During the Vietnam